All right, we're back for part three of the 3D fire pump that I'm drawing. Usually it doesn't take me this long, but um, since I'm trying to figure out how to, you know, post on YouTube and, and share my process with everyone, um, I tend to take a little bit longer. Uh, I'm going to try something a little different on this one. Once I get into a good groove on just keep drawing, I might put some music on in the background or something. We'll see. But anyway, in the past couple of videos, we went over how um, how I choose the parts in the parts library and how we insert them and use the uh, the playing card icons here to insert our fittings and and all that. And so. Let's uh, go ahead and continue on with the build. So we inserted the fire pump, which is where it's at right here. And now we got to insert this funky piece before the uh, check valve gets inserted here. Now, again, this is a little unique to that fire pump assembly. I'm still not exactly sure if that's a fitting or what but or who makes that fitting but we'll we'll just the the important thing that I want to make sure we get is just the dimensions on here make sure we're taking up the proper space so according to this data on the 1594BF the fitting that comes here, go back to the data here that says it's a 4 inch by 6 inch groove discharge spool, 12.5 inches long. So just for kicks. I'm going to see if there's anything. So there's one thing that HydroCAD will let you do. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to select one of those. I doubt HydroCAD will have it available in their parts library. So usually when it, when there's not a part available that you choose, um, it'll ask you if you want to create it. So let's see. Say no information. Do you want to build this? Sure. So for this one, you kind of need to have a bit of knowledge on as to what's available and what's not available in the library. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And I'm going to call this a, let's call it a reducer. And one side is a four inch flange and the other side six inch grooved so takeout is from end to end offset outlet offset is normally zero for centric input okay so the takeout was 12.5 zero now I'm gonna make my reducer diameter one should be greater than diameter two okay Let's see if it worked. Let's go to our front view, or our left view actually, in this case. No, no front view. And that seems to be it right there. So again, this is just for takeout purposes of the pump. If I was actually building this pump for somebody to go out and install it um, that wasn't on a skid and they were going to install piece by piece, then I might care a little bit more about if it's actually correct or not. Um, or if that, you know, where exactly that part would come from. I would include it in the... Um, 
in the product data brochure. So if you're a fire sprinkler designer, you should be building your product data brochures and submitting them immediately at the beginning of a project. As soon as you're ready to start, as soon as the project gets handed off to you and you have to sit down with a salesperson and you get a chance to review the specs if there are any, you want to build yourself a product data brochure that includes your fire sprinklers, the kind of pipe you're going to be using, whether it's schedule 10 or schedule 40, are you going to galvanize it for a dry system or not, uh, your pipe nipples, your fittings, what kind of threaded fittings you're going to use. Um, some specs will call for cast iron, some specs will call for ductile iron. I've seen other specs call for malleable iron. So it all, you know, you really want to know what you're using. Uh, after taking a look at the structural plans as well, figure out what you're go how you're going to hang your system, you know. Um, so include your hangers. And in this case, we're going to be hanging um, to the deck which is a uh, concrete deck and I like to use this uh, HDIP drop-in anchor from uh, Hilti and um, so including that including your valves and one thing that I did uh, forget to include in here is my backflow preventer so I'll go ahead and uh, add that at a later time and send it on down the road but the good thing about doing this at the very beginning is if you say you're going to assign this project to a junior designer, you can hand this to them and be like, here are the products that we're using. That way there's no guesswork. There's no, um, you, you avoid mistakes. Um, like in this project, for example, uh, the specs called for concealed fire sprinklers and the salesperson said that they were going to go extended coverage and that's how they bid the project since they had a fire pump. The project includes light hazard uh, occupancies which is fine and usually no problem with that but it also includes uh, ordinary hazard and um, laboratories so your options start running pretty thin when you get into a higher hazard classification and um, in this case, Viking was the only was the only uh, manufacturer that I could find that made a concealed fire sprinkler for ordinary hazard occupancies uh, with a, an extended coverage uh, application. So, without knowing this beforehand you can run into a lot of problems because if the salesperson just said hey we're doing extended coverage on this and as a designer you didn't confirm whether or not you were going concealed recessed or, or semi recessed uh, what what your finishes are going to be um, then you're already off on the on the wrong foot and I hear more often than not that the product data brochures tend to come after design has already started and it should really come at the very beginning. One also good thing about building your product data brochure is if even if you have a project that uh, has a, a timeline further on down, if you're an independent designer you can build one of these right away and send it off um, and and say hey here's your product data brochure that way your client has sub something substantial in hand and um, something that you can bill for so that that you know will start to generate a bit of of a revenue stream as well for the project if you're if you're doing um, billing for it uh, if you're getting paid up front, then congratulations, but um, usually you have to provide something before you are able to invoice anything at all. So anyway, we got into a sort of different topic there, but 
So I want to finish building this thing up. So we got our fitting there that we made in um, Hydralist. What I'm going to do is also get myself another gasket pack for a 4 inch. And it gives you the option of 250 or 125. I think the uh, spec for the pump said that it was a 250. And the difference with that is you just get more nuts and bolts. Hydrocat is going to default to the 125. So go ahead and zero this out. And again, it doesn't really matter too much since it, it's all going to come included anyway. We're just doing this for coordination. I just want it to look right in the drawing. And again, we. So this gets pulled off to my second monitor. So I'm pulling it in just so you can see it. And there it is. And here's another sort of nifty command I use from time to time. Just type in hide and you kind of get a rundown of how your assembly is looking so far so so far so good then zoom p for previous and it'll get you out of that so moving along now the next thing i kind of want to do is is set my base plate here the for the pad so i'm going to move this from the middle of here and if we look closely over here the suction end is pretty much flush with the edge of the platform. So that's kind of what I'm going to do here. And since we know that the DZ dimension or the 1594BF is 23.1, I know that if I go from the center of this fitting here and I go down 23.1, that's going to be my floor right there and now that we're done with the plumbing background what we can do is on a quick side note these are um, very strange uh, xrefs that have been coming into my drawings for the last I don't know eight years they're like ghost xrefs from a previous project from many many moons ago different computers um i have no idea somehow they keep following me and somehow they keep ending up in some drawings i usually just have to detach them but i recognize that first file that i erased the 1801 file but anyway so i don't think we really need the plumbing drawing there anymore i could detach it but I'm just going to unload it just to clean things up here in case I need it again. And if you wanted to clear up more screen space, you can just close your properties box. I tend to use properties a lot though. So oftentimes I just leave it open and I sacrifice the uh, screen space there. So we got this fitting in there. The next thing is the check valve. So let's go ahead and add that. Seven one seven. I'm gonna want the uh, access plate to be pointing to the front of the. So I'm gonna select the green ski pole. So what's next? We got our check valve and then another T. And this T is going to be pointed up. So I'm going to choose yellow spade. And then a butterfly valve. I'm going to point that valve outlet to, I mean the valve uh, wheel to the front there. So what's the opposite of the red is a yellow. 
okay and then another spool piece to the end so let's take a look at this from the overhead view so you see it's starting to look pretty similar to their top view only this is all 2d right here We're going to go ahead and rotate this guy. And it looks like the controller is on the uh, discharge side. So if we're in our top view here. All right. So the base plate isn't necessarily centered in the, the skid, so we're going to get this SY dimension for the 1594BF. SY is 19.9 from the edge to the center. So here, we'll go from the center of this. I'm just going to copy this over 19.9. And what I'm going to do now is in my properties, see how we end Z at 1 foot 11 and 1 eighth, put those to zero to zero and you'll see it over here in this menu boxes in this viewport over here as well zero to zero now we're flat on the ground and I can actually move my skid to the exact location so that's how it's going to be laid out right there and Transformer. I mean, not the transformer, the controller. This project doesn't have a transformer. Transformer is... Looks like it gets put a little bit in front of the edge there. So it looks like OY is... So we got SY here, OY is from the face of your controller to the face of the outlet for your test header. So we'll get the we'll get the controller placed here in a little bit. Let's go ahead and um, get the rest of this finished up here first. We'll go back to the view here. So we got the T, we got the butterfly valve, and then probably another spool piece here. So let's go ahead and draw our bypass. And this is going to give us our outlet for the test header. And for this, it's just going to be pretty much more of the same. You know, what's your fitting? Uh, I think I have a flow meter in HydroCAD. Let's see. can't remember exactly what it's under. I 
Let's see if there's any information on the data sheet. Mm. Improve Venturi flow meter. Hmm. So let's see if we can find a meter of flow meter. No, one word. I doubt it. Okay, well. These are all backflows. We'll find that a little bit later. So the important thing is, is to get this done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this here. I'm going to worry about the flow meter and um, the air release valve a little bit later. Again, we're not really going to need it. I can, even in paper space, we can just end up putting a block there or something and, and call it good. Since again, we're not exactly, we're not going to need a fab anything here. We just need to show for coordination where the uh, the pump is going to be and uh, where our risers are going to go. So for this part, for this section here, I'm going to try a little something. And don't forget, you can also check out my website, dogfightfire.com. I uh, only have two blogs up, but... I made one about my YouTube channel and just going to the main page gives you some of the services that I offer but I'm gonna try to I'm gonna mute the mic and um, get some music going and then finish up this last part here I hope you like metal.
necessary because of fighting the consequences. But the central figure, has, it has been realized, is the shop, who is, you know, this person of indeterminate death. Everyone else has a determinable death. They are the linear cardboard people walking around. But the shaman is of indeterminate death. That's why.
hope you enjoyed that little musical interlude. That was just uh, some filler for you there. What I want to do is rotate this guy out of the way too. So I think that's our pump package right there. I'm going to go ahead and save this. This is M equipment. I'm going to isolate this and put this in the 3D layer as well. Go ahead and isolate everything. Now, I don't know if you saw, but I just randomly put the couplings in there. I don't really care too much about that right now. So, this pretty much shows where our skid's going to be. And our riser is going to be further on down the line, somewhere over here. Don't quite know what that's going to be yet, but um, as far as where the location of the skid and all this equipment's going to go, I think we're good to um, to see what this looks like in the model. So what I'm going to do is, and I'm going to actually bring in the riser symbol with this one as well. So I'm going to isolate both of these layers. Copy base, zero, zero, zero. Go into my model file. Erase the original. Zero, zero, zero. Actually, not zero. Negative five feet. I don't know if you remember. Wait, did I mess that up? Let's try again. Just paste it. Zero, zero, zero. Oh, it copied it kind of weird. Okay, so sometimes when you're working in multiple viewports, it um, will run on you a little bit. But usually if you go to your um, 2D command, it'll be okay. And one thing I noticed as well is I didn't bring my platform with me. So let's put this in 3D detail. Isolate this. Base. Hopefully this works. All right, and then move it down five feet. So zero, zero, negative sixty. Save it. And now let's see what it looks like in here. Let's go ahead and get some room in here and we'll refresh it and see what it does boom okay so we got our fire pump assembly in there and I think this will work for coordination I mean they're gonna know now that our pump pads gonna be right in this area here They're going to know where our controller is going to be. Three foot six away from there, so we're good. And what I like about it, about how we brought it in, is you can also see. Oh, you can't see the riser symbol. You might be able to if you turn off the floor layer or something, but anyway. So it looks like I'm going to go ahead and call this one good. Let's look at it from a cutaway.
of this our fire pump on a skid right there so from here you would connect your T and then probably run a riser somewhere over here but this is good enough to show them where we're gonna put our stuff and uh, it's a pretty accurate representation of what's actually gonna be there now what we can do while we're here is figure out and we can uh, probably show it you know what we'll go ahead and do it we'll run this video a little bit longer so that we can get our test header out there now it looks like I might be conflicting with something here just so they have it so close to the door that they might ask us to clear the steel here and that might be an issue but we do need that 10 pipe lengths the 10 times the pipe diameter so we'll have to figure that out they may end up having to scoot us in a little bit um, or relocate this ductwork here because you can see right here we're also into that ductwork with our coupling so this is where, where coordination really begins to um, to take hold you bring this up and say hey you know I can rotate my fittings but it's still not going to be enough to maybe clear all this um, it's not a huge clash but it's enough to sort of bring it up so let's go back to our drawing real quick so I do want to draw our test header and our test header, since this is a 750 GPM pump, our test header is going to be a three-way. So let's see if we can just find it under a three-way. Oops. So FTC, um, inch and a quarter, 100. 6.5, no. So let's see if we can find it under header. No. Test. And I know it's in here because I've found it before. So let's see, pump manifold. Six inch pump manifold, three by two and a half. So I think this is the one that we need. They think they call it a manifold. So we'll do that. And then on top of that, you also have your um, your angle hose valves. They're two and a half inch NST female by males. And with Hydrolist, you only need to select it once to add it to your library. And then once it's in your drawing, you can add it as many times as you need. Um, so what we're going to do here is probably come off here with a 6-inch 90, drop down, 90 over, and then out the wall this way and we'll see if we got enough room so first things first let's let's put our 90 in there I forgot that we I don't know if you saw while the music was playing, but I uh, you can default your selection if you just need your fitting to insert a little bit faster than normal and you don't want to select each way. You can set it to automatically insert at whatever location you want, but in this case we need a, a different location. So um, we're going to insert our 90 and looks like it's, um, what is that, green? okay and then insert another 90 because we're gonna need it out the wall so 
Oops, I started it the wrong direction, but we can just rotate that. Okay, so from this top view, you can see we can probably come out. I would probably want a little filler piece right there just to get it away from all the equipment. So let's see if we can pull it out six inches. Let's see what that does. Okay, so we got that. And then if we go to our front view, and let's just let's just go up thirty six inches here. So I'm gonna want the manifold to be about three feet off three feet off the outside ground so usually it's minimum uh, between three and five feet so we're just going to drop down 24 inches from that and then and as you can see in the top view it still looks the same so really helps to un have your your orthographics down in your head so we got you know little here and actually no we need our butterfly valve so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these real quick because I want to insert the butterfly valve first and I also want it to yeah because we need we need this butterfly valve on there first so let's go over here and that should push it out far enough to where we won't need that filler piece. So, so double check butterfly valve insert and we want that valve to be pointed out this way. So we'll choose the red heart. And now we can insert R90 yellow direction and then another 90 in the yellow direction and then we're still going to move this down two feet and save that control s now it gets real jumbled right here that's why sometimes i just type in hide just to kind of make sure i'm seeing everything correctly in the view and um, so far it looks okay but it does get a little congested here especially when you're dealing with all these fittings sometimes it helps um, if you go to your options sometimes it helps changing the background color something more easy on the eyes so this the white background always reminds me of uh, like a Revit environment so Anyway, let's go ahead and add our filler piece here. There's the two feet, and then, okay. So, pump manifold, three-way. Since it's circular, usually it doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna select it here. Let's go to our top view and see what that looks like. So perfect. That's just the one that we needed. Now we're going to move this. So this gets mounted on the outside wall. And we still need some room for our other flange and the gasket pack. So we need we want to give it, you know, some space off the wall. So we'll go about let's go about four foot four. And then we'll do a flange by groove piece here for that filler. This will be six inch as well. Six inch flange end by groove. We'll pick our ski poles. It should say four foot four. Insert pipe. And I know we already have a six inch gasket pack. So we'll just go ahead and add that as well. 
go. And uh, let's go ahead and add our couplings over here. So once you get in th into the groove of knowing what you have to work with, doing minimal, um, minimal alterations to your drawings, being able to pull models from different sources, you get into a little groove where you, it really just becomes second nature and um, not very difficult at all. Like this doesn't really confuse me anymore. When I first started, it was really intimidating. But all I knew is that I got tired of drawing multiple views on for, for the same riser in 2D. And especially when there's changes that happen, and that's where the work starts looking really sloppy, is um, you can spend your time and draw a perfect 2D riser detail, but say they come back and say, no, we need this pipe moved here or this location changed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The um, the beauty of drawing it in 3D is you draw it once and then you just just a matter of picking your viewpoints and then if something needs to change it's much easier to me to just change it in here instead of going through and trimming lines and redrawing stuff in 2D and so forth so so we're gonna do our test header now and this should be pretty easy we're just gonna add three two and a half inch nipples and then our angle valves and the cool thing is is this fitting already comes with uh, preloaded ski poles to the center of the outlets so we'll pick a four inch nipple two and a half inch so two and a half inch and these are threaded and we'll just go four insert pipe and insert one here insert one here insert one there and then Angle hose valve. Actually, let's make sure we're picking the right direction first. So, clubs, clubs, and clubs. So we'll pick the clubs. All right. Club. 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 Now this might be a problem right here. You see with that door, there's not much else we can do except maybe just rotate that whole assembly there, which the easiest way for me to do that, if I was going to do this and rotate it, I would probably so quickest way would be move this uh, so the viewport the viewport really confuses this thing here. Let's unlock all this real quick. Okay. If we can move that whole guy here, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring the pipe with me too. So move this. Let's say an easy number to remember: 200 feet. So the reason I do that is that'll pull it away from this environment here, and then I can go to my left view. And I should see it over here by its lonesome self. And then rotate it based on the center of the whole assembly.
just making sure I selected everything center and then boom and then move this guy back another 200 feet and now we're out of the way save that looks pretty sweet so what I'm going to go, go ahead and do once again isolate the layer here copy base so zero, zero. hopefully it works fine in this one again zero, zero, 0000 and it didn't so it's going to be over here and it's going to be sideways Yeah, see, so for some reason it's not liking it the way that I'm. I have a feeling it's these viewports. So since we're pretty much done, let's go back to just the single viewport. And then we'll go back to our 2D view. Copy paste. Zero, zero, zero. There it is. And then move this guy again. Move from 0 to negative 60. Save it. And now let's go back to our model and see what it looks like once we add this test header. And we'll refresh it. Boom. Looks pretty cool. And now they're going to know where we're going to be on the outside wall, too. And then our FTC is going to be somewhere out here as well. But that is going to get added further on down the line over here. Or maybe even our, in our bypass somewhere. But we'll have to run it. It'll have to be somewhere. But for now... That's the skid location. If you all have any questions or anything, feel free to uh, shoot me an email anytime. Design at dogfivefire.com. Uh, if you have any questions over the stuff that I cover, the music that I play uh, is all my stuff. So just to avoid copyright and all that fun stuff that you can get pulled, your videos pulled off the internet for. Um, so what I'm going to do now is... I'm actually going to resave this drawing file as a um, different file name. And I'm going to get rid of all the sprinklers and all the other data in here. That way, if there's a, any changes in the riser room, I don't need to worry ab too much about my overhead system. So, and what I will do as well is go into the job folder and erase the fire pump from the other file that's just for the overhead. Boom. Save. Close this guy. So save this one and we'll close this one as well. Save this guy. All right. So what I'm going to do is pull up BIM 360 and I'll log in.
waiting for the authen authenticity code, the two-part code system thing that they do. Let me get this inputted. We're in. And I'm going to pull up the project. So submodel uploads. We'll go into the section that I'm under and we will drag and drop the models into the folder. So we got the pump file in there. We'll upload that. And you have to be out of the file before you upload to BIM 360. So now that that's uploaded, what we can do is go back to the model and Let's see overall construction model open it up and BIM 360 glue is basically like um, Navis works uh, that gives you the uh, online uh, capability to view files online and all that so it's pretty pretty neat and we should see our model federated in there once we because we uploaded it and we pasted it to the drawing file but now it's a matter of adding it to the file here add models to current merged so yes and we'll go to the section that I'm under and then which one was it this one is already in use so pump add models and while it processes all that it tends to run a little bit slower on BIM 360 than on the desktop but that's expected I think so let's go back to our riser location and we should see what we just drew loaded into the model, which it is. And now they know where we're at. And this is their data here. This is a block that they sort of had grayed out for us, but now it's our equipment that's in here. We got our backflow preventer. We got our open over and there's our pump on our skid and we're good to go. So that was it for this one. Thanks again, guys. Um, we'll see you on the next one. It's always fun to uh, be able to share what I do and how I do it. There isn't much of an, of a resource out there for fire sprinkler designers. And hopefully this will inspire more of you all out there to Maybe make your own channel. This is pretty easy stuff. Uh, you just get this OBS broadcaster and you can you can even stream with it. I'm recording and then posting on YouTube, but you can even do live streams and whatnot. Um, and my approach with all this is to um, just show you exactly what I do. No lessons in mind. No, you know, step one, step two, step three. No, you know, flashy intros or anything. It's just basically you hanging out with me while I draw and um, you know, feel free to comment on anything that you saw that I might have missed um, if you want to tell me that I you know doing a good job or suck or whatever um, always more than welcome to share your opinions I won't ever censor anything or delete comments or anything like that unless they are very very inappropriate which there seems to be some spam that seems to make its way through but for the most part thanks again and uh, we'll see you on the next one